Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 9th of July. India has leading role to play in revival of post-COVID-19 world, says PM Modi. President Khani says Afghan people will have a final say on peace process. And two killed, several missing due to floods in Nepal. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday said that there is faith that India has a leading role to play in global revival in the post-COVID-19 world. While addressing the India Global Week virtual conference, he said amid the fight against the pandemic, India is also focusing on its economic health and is already witnessing green shoots of recovery. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi speaking at the three-day virtual conference India Global Week on Thursday said that there is faith that India has a leading role to play in global revival in the post-COVID-19 world. PM Modi's address focused on foreign investment prospects in India. He said India is reforming and is one of the most open economies in the world. Modi said while India is fighting the pandemic, it is also focusing on its economic health and the country is already witnessing green shoots of recovery. India is ready to do whatever it can do to further global good and prosperity. This is an India that is reforming, performing and transforming. This is an India that offers new economic opportunities. This is an India that is adopting a human-centric and inclusive approach to development. India awaits you all. Meanwhile, India's Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan, who chaired a group of ministers meeting to review COVID-19 situation in the country on Thursday, said, though India has become the third most affected country, it is important to understand this in the correct perspective. He said India is a country with the second highest population in the world. Our cases per million are 538, while world average is 1,453. As of Thursday, India reported 767,296 cases of coronavirus, with 21,129 deaths so far. Around 82 people from India to Pakistan and 114 persons from Pakistan to India who were stuck in both countries due to sealing of international borders amid the coronavirus lockdown were allowed to go home, a protocol official said on Thursday. India had sealed its international borders in mid-March to curb the spread of coronavirus. However, an exchange of citizens was done in multiple batches for both India and Pakistan at Atari Vaga border. Both the neighbouring countries have reported a continuous rise in virus cases despite intermittent lockdowns. I came to Karachi, I came to India. I came to my mother and I came to get to my mother. I didn't get to get to my mother, but I got to get to my mother. How did you get to my mother? Moving on, India has rubbished Pakistan's claim that Indian national Kulbhushan Jadhav, who is in its custody, has refused to initiate review petition against death sentence handed to him and called it a farce. India has rubbished Pakistan's claim that Indian national Kulbhushan Jadav, who is in its custody for alleged espionage, has refused to initiate review petition and called it a farce. In a statement on Wednesday, India's foreign ministry also accused Pakistan of coercing Jadav, who was sentenced to death in 2017 over charges of espionage, to refuse to file a review in his case. The ministry said Jadav has been sentenced to execution through a farcical trial. Despite our repeated requests, Pakistan continues to deny India free and unimpeded access to Kulbushan Jadav. In its verdict in July 2019, 
the International Court of Justice had ordered Pakistan to undertake an effective review of the conviction and sentence of Jadav. India responded that Pakistan was dragging its feet on the World Court's order in letter and spirit. India denies the allegations against Jadav and maintains that he was kidnapped by Pakistani operators from Iran, where he had business interests. Traders in Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi, have said the lockdown has been a crackdown on the economy. They expressed businesses have been severely impacted due to restrictions amid coronavirus lockdown. Traders in Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi, have rejected coronavirus curbs on opening of businesses, saying that the lockdown has been a crackdown on the economy. Representatives of Karachi Electronics Dealers Association or KEDA in the press conference said the virus cannot be controlled by closing businesses and blamed no relief was provided to traders who shut down the business for nearly three months of lockdown. Traders and business owners have said that restrictions amid the ongoing so-called smart lockdown were not bearable anymore and they will be forced to show resistance from now on. They also raise concerns over unjust fines being imposed on business owners. The traders demand that the time limit to open businesses should be extended till 9 p.m and the restrictions amid ongoing smart lockdown should be lifted because a large number of traders had gone bankrupt. Pakistan on Thursday reported 240,848 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 4,983 deaths so far. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani has said that the government has the responsibility to merge the Taliban into the structure of the political system. However, it is only the Afghans who have the right to decide the final fate of the peace process. The statement comes at a time when direct talks between the government and the Taliban are expected to start soon. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has said that the government has the responsibility to merge the Taliban into the structure of the political system. However, it is the only Afghan people who have the right to decide the final fate of the peace process. Ghani made this statement on Wednesday during a trip to the northern Afghan province of Kapisa to assess the overall security situation in the north. He asserted that he will not surrender to force but will be ready to work for peace where there is no violence. This comes as the release of the last batch of Taliban inmates was called off earlier this week over their involvement in serious crimes. However, expectations run high that the direct talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban will start sometime this month. In early March, President Ghani issued a decree to release 5,000 Taliban inmates on parole. And the Taliban agreed to release 1,000 soldiers, but the exchange of prisoners was repeatedly delayed. The exchange of prisoners is a part of peace deal inked between the Taliban and the United States in Qatar in February. Afghan government was not a signatory of the deal. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has asked for a vigorous worldwide response with the participation of all countries to combat the adverse impacts of the coronavirus pandemic on the migrants. Hasina said COVID-19 does not discriminate but its adverse impacts severely discriminates against the vulnerable, especially the migrants and women workers. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has called for a vigorous worldwide response to combat the adverse impacts of the coronavirus pandemic on the migrants. During Hasina, pandemic, while virtually addressing a global summit of the International Labour Organization held in Geneva on Wednesday, we said the virus does not discriminate, but its adverse impacts severely that, discriminates against the vulnerable, especially the migrants and Myanmar. women workers. I must say that a vigorous, well-coordinated and worldwide response with the participation of all, of all countries, international organizations, civil society organizations 
and private sector is needed now. Hasina also placed a three-point suggestion at the event to tackle the ongoing coronavirus crisis worldwide while helping migrants, like retaining jobs of the migrant workers at the overseas markets, they must be given compensation and other dismissal benefits in case of layoffs and after the pandemic, they would have to be recruited for reactivating the economy. In news from Nepal, at least two people were killed while 23 others went missing as several houses were swept away by floods triggered by incessant rainfall in Nepal's Sindhupal Chop district on Thursday. The incident happened as the water level surged in the local streams after rainfall overnight and landslides at multiple places. Search and rescue operations in the area were underway to the last reports came in. This comes as the weather department had forecast heavy rain to continue for the next five days starting Wednesday. Flood and landslides every year claim over 100 lives across Nepal. As coronavirus pandemic continues to affect the lives of vulnerable people across India, silk weavers in northern spiritual town of Varanasi have started making personal protective equipments to fight the virus outbreak. The crisis has lured the sale of famous Banarasi saris, which is a traditional Indian attire for women made of silk. Silk weavers in India's northern spiritual town of Varanasi have started making personal protective equipments or PPE to fight the COVID-19 outbreak over the lowering sale of famous Banarasi saris, traditional Indian attire for women made of silk. Banarsi sarees are known for its gold and silver brocade and lavish embroidery. They are made of finely woven silk and are relatively heavy due to the intricacy of the designs. However, a fall in demand for the garments due to the coronavirus pandemic has left the Banarsi silk sari industry with an uncertain future as the demand for the finished goods remain low and lack of raw materials to carry out day-to-day -day activities smoothly. लॉकडाउन के बाद में जब वो पूरा व्यापार हम लोग का जब दो महीने बाद खुला तो देखा कि पूरा व्यापार हम लोग का एकदम बंद सा हो गया अब लग भी नहीं रहा था कि दो चार छह महीने अभी इस व्यापार के अंदर किसी भी तरह का कोई स्कोप आने की संभावना नहीं लग रही थी तो फिर एक दिन मोदी जी का वही भाषण सुना आत्मनिर्भर भारत का जो सपना उनका सजोया था तो ये सोच के फिर हम लोगों ने एक ये पीपी किट का काम शुरू किया Meanwhile, various groups across India are also assessing ways to manufacture low-cost ventilators as the country continues its pandemic battle while facing a shortage of critical medical supplies. One of them is AGVA Healthcare, a company based in Noida City near capital New Delhi, which has designed cost-effective ventilators for the patients at the intensive care unit fighting the COVID-19 respiratory disease. India, with a population of roughly 1.3 billion, as of Thursday reported 269,789 active cases of the coronavirus and is the third most effective country globally. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline. And follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.